Well, hello, my loves, and happy Sunday to you. Today is going to be a, the start of a fun week. Uh, I have some new stencils out, and I am doing my spring concertina. I have done, I started with fall, I believe, did um, winter, and now spring. And I can't wait. I can't wait. A couple of things before we dive in. Uh, the stencil, all the new stencils will be available in the shop. So I won't have any stencils on sale. These are all the new ones. And then I might throw in a few others, but um, there won't be any stencils this, on sale this week. Just the new ones will be available to you. And I hope you love them as much as I do. I'm kind of excited about it. And then um, the other thing that I wanted to tell you is that today is the last day for the Adventure Walk uh, workshop, uh, early bird pricing. And I just want you to see, these are just some of the best projects I've done. And the workshop has just, I mean, I just go into a lot of detail and really I feel like give you a really good handle on creating abstract landscapes. And, um, they're just, it's just a lot of fun and a lot of great step-by-step -step, step tools to help you um, feel confident when you're doing your abstract landscapes. So if you are interested, today is the last day for the early bird pricing. Okay. This week, today I am going to be doing, I'm going to be putting my concertina together and I'm going to be putting the background together. And then along this week, I can't remember if I'm going to do it Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, Monday and Tuesday. So today, Monday and Tuesday, part one, part two, part three for our concertina. I think that'll give me plenty of time to fill my concertina. And then the cover, I will be doing the cover. That'll be in the subscriber library and in the membership. All of this will be in the subscriber library and the membership. Subscribe library. It's hard to say. Want to make sure that was clear. All that, all those links will be down below in the YouTube description box along with the link to the new stencils. And that's it. <laughs> that's all I have to tell you. Okay, so let's dive in. So I have out here, let me scooch this over, put this aside for just a second. And I want to talk about the stencils. So a majority of them I'm going to say almost all of them are masks and I did that on purpose because of how I'm going to be creating and with spring in mind. So I have, let me go to the full page ones. So I have two of these masks and so you can see the pattern on that and then there's the second pattern. And all of the designs are designs that can feel like flowers. And with the way that I've been wanting to create my flowers very loosely and abstractly, I thought these would be really great as parts of flowers or something within the flower, like this design. And so um, you can see here, see how this looks? I, I feel like it really looks floral. And this is rolled out like this. This is stamped, so I take it and I stamp it. And this is the cleanup page, which I absolutely love. So when I go like this and I stamp it, I go like that. And I get this great page. So there's a lot of ways that you can use these. And I like the big pattern because sometimes I want that kind of floral pattern in the background without it being specific. And that's how I'm going to use these um, for the concertina because I want to be able to see the design in the background and pull it out. Same with this one. So uh, let's see. Here's, here's, because uh, I use my roller and I roll it out and I did it in black so you could see it the best. But can you imagine if this is like in Quint Magenta? And then this, so I rolled it out 
And then I stamped it. And this is my cleanup paper. So those are two. These are eight by tens. What I also did was, put this over here, is I took the individual patterns and I made them five by eights. So they're bigger. They're actually a bigger size. So let me bring back my brown paper bag here. So you can get, if you want just a certain pattern, you can do that in the five by eight. Like if maybe you really love this one, you can do that in the five by eight, or you can get this and just use this section, whichever you choose. But you can see how much bigger this pattern is in the five by eight. So there's some options here for you as far as size and what you actually want. Like this one I love. That just looks like a flower. This one too, I just, I, I looked for really kind of abstract feel for, for flowers. And you, when you order, you, you get the, you get the outer edge. So let me just pull this out for example. So you get the outer edge. It's sent with it. So if you decide you want that edge and you just want the internal pattern and you don't want to use it as a mask, you can, you know, put it put it back in its spot and just put a piece of tape in there and that will hold it in for you to use. You know, you can do that in a couple spots. Um, these have rough edges. The stencil patterns have rough edges because I wanted them to be rough. I wanted them to f not feel so crisp and clean. And so you can kind of see, I think you can kind of see that rough edge. Let me get the other darker one. And just kind of this rough edge. And I like that because it, it doesn't feel perfect and that's what I'm going for. Okay, so those are the five by eights. And then I have some florals. Now I, I wanna explain this just a little bit because with the way that I have been trying to create my florals, very abstractly, very loose, I wanted for myself a stencil that gave me some freedom to do that that didn't necessarily have all the detail and the lines and all of that kind of stuff. So I made it. These, it's very, very generic. You're going to think very generic. There's no detail. Now, let me get the masks. It comes with the inside. So you have choices. So like, and I've got tape on the back of this one because I've been using it as a stamp. So which way does this one go? Like this. Am I doing the wrong flower? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. So I, yeah. So you can put it in and use it like that and use the middle or take it out. You can stamp with it. And I'm going to show you that in just a second. And I have used the main stencil to stencil with, and then I've come back over and stamped on it. So I want to just give you an idea of what my thought process is behind the stencils. I want them to be super simple because I want to be able to create that abstract kind of feeling. So like for this one, this one right here, I can come in brushing in towards the center. Brushing in towards the center. I'll come in with a little bit of white. Well, that was a lot of white. I'll come back. Okay, I'll come back in with a little bit of sienna. Possibly. Just here and there. Is that going to give me enough contrast? It's okay. So I, I got too much white on there. So it's going to give me the shape that I want. I want that really kind of random abstract feeling really quickly. This is a quick step to, um, and I'm going to put a little bit of um, burnt sienna in there, and then I'll come back and I'll grab a little bit this time of white. And I can just kind of touch at the edges 
And then you can add different colors. Let's add a little bit of yellow. Kind of go a little orange in there. And then I've got this amazing flower that's got brush strokes and light and dark. And if I want to, okay, let's just say I want to go a little lighter. I can come back over it. Let's add a little bit more light. And let's add a little more white in this area right here. And then this area right here. I can do that. It's still keeping my shape and still having it feel really kind of abstract. And so that is what I wanted. Now I can also come back, you know, once it's dry, it's still wet. Once it's dry, I can come back and add, turn it in a different direction. And I'm just going to take my, I'm going to bring a different petal shape in. Make it a little bit bigger. See how it's now I've got it a little bit more round on that side. So I could do that here. I can bring that in. Bring that in. And I can continue to add some color. I could even really kind of make one petal stick out to the side if I wanted to. Like that. See what I'm saying? So this has a lot of freedom. I want to show you this too. So taking your darks and your lights. So this is the side view. I want to make the back side darker. So I'm going to come in with some burnt sienna. I'm going to come in this way with my burnt sienna. I've got a little, of course, magenta on there. I'm going to come all the way down here with my brush strokes like this. And I'm working in, I'm not going out, so that I get a cleaner, somewhat of a cleaner edge. Then I'll come straight into my magenta. Maybe I'll add just a tiny bit of white to that to make it a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to come up with my brush strokes. And then I'm going to come into some white here. And I'm going to just add a tiny bit of white in here. Maybe even a little white in this area here. So now I've got this real defined edge. This is a different color back here. It's darker. This is lighter. And you can see, I'm hoping you can see, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. You can see the difference of how I've got the start of this amazing flower, these shapes, the petals, that kind of thing. And again, I can come back here and extend it out. I could add different color in there too. So it's giving me a lot of freedom. I've got the floral shape, but I've got all this freedom to create some amazing things. Now, this is the, the inside of that flower. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna grab some prism violet just cause I think it'll sh show up the best. And I've got a little mixture of that magenta on, and I've put a piece of tape on the back. It's just a folded piece of tape so that I can hold this and stamp it. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm doing that same kind of brush mark onto my piece. I'm going to come back with a little bit of white at the edges and maybe a little darker in this area here. So it's like I'm painting this and now I'm going to stamp it. And I'm going to push it out and it's going to it's not going to be perfect and that's what I want. So let's see what we've got. See look at that. And so like this edge right here doesn't have anything. I can kind of come back and maybe make sure that that's but look at that is a gorgeous flower right there. So now, if you're not into the brush mark feel, you can still use your foam 
um, sponges and, and stencil it out. But I would do it the same way. So I'll come in with some, some burnt sienna. And I'm going to come in right into this area like this. And then let's, I'm going to grab some prism violet and I'll come up this way. Now I don't get that definition like I do with the brush, but it's still going to give me, look at how, how gorgeous is that. And then you, you now have the option, so if I come in with a smaller brush, let's, let me grab a round, do I have it out here? Yeah. I have a filbert brush that has a, like a petal shape feeling. I could then come in Add some white to my prism violet. And maybe pull this in and make it look more like petals. But what it's doing is it's giving me freedom to kind of play a little bit um, and have it be easy. I don't have to recreate things. I've got the general shape of what I'm looking for and then I can go to town and make it fun. And that's kind of kind of what I was hoping for. So I can come back into this sienna and I can kind of bring this down and then come back over it with my prism violet. And I've got a really great looking flower. And maybe I need a little bit lighter color in there just so that you can see it. See that? There's just so many things. Like if I used a bigger brush, my petals would look bigger. But that's pretty, pretty amazing. So you've got a lot of options. Like this one's so fun to stamp with. I'm just gonna quickly do it because it's so fun. <laughs> and I'm just grabbing any color I have left on my palette right now. So it's kind of a mix of color. Not a ton left in there. So we'll see what we get. But again, I've got tape on the back of this. I didn't put any white on there, but... And so I can come back, and I may not have enough paint because I was running out. And I can come back and move this around too. So if I came back and just... Like I could come back in with a totally different color. The, the, and this is what I did today. I just played with this because there's so many options. So if I come back in now with just yellow. And it's still wet, so I'm gonna have some mixture happening. And so what happens now, I, I turn it to a different direction. Let's go like this. And let's just see what happens. And I'm beginning to layer and I can, I've got these petals now <clears throat> that I can respond to. So I'll just use my Stabilo All Pencil. So I've got all these petals that I can respond to. I'm just, I'm outlining them so you can see them on camera and to play with. And so, come back in now and really get that brush stroke feel with all those layers. And you can come back in with a little bit of this in there. And then I can grab a little bit of green, dot that center, maybe a little bit of black in there. Same thing in here. And now I'm, I'm starting to build that flower easily without having to think too hard, without having to kind of recreate this every single time. So that's the florals. And then two more. I have a tree, kind of a, it's called budding tree because it's got buds on it. Oh, and the floral is available in an 8x10 and a 5x8. And then the budding tree is available in 5x8, 8x10, and 9x12. 
And this this is the rolled out version. So I put I put my stencil down and I rolled it out and that's what you get. And it's not supposed to be spooky. <laughs> I mean it can be. Obviously you can you, this kind of can be like a night um, tree but if you do browns and greens it's a budding tree and then this is the stamp of it which I'm excited about because I can do this on tissue paper and be able to use it in all different kinds of ways and then this is the cleanup page which I love so this one is available in uh, all all the sizes including the 5x8 and it's pretty cute well, I, I think I showed it to you. Oh, it's right here. It's very detailed, very fine. And here's the stamped, oops, the stamped side of it. And I can 100% see that on a piece of tissue paper in some collage element. So that is that one. And I'm going to be using all of these. And then I also wanted some kind of scratchy, spindly leaves to kind of go with my abstract flowers. So I've got, I rolled this out with my, my roller. This is what it looks like, you know, with the cleanup. And that's the cleanup page. So these leaves are going to work beautifully with my abstract florals because they're kind of windy. And, and I think, you know, that's exactly what I was looking for. So this is available in 8x10 and a 5x8. Uh, okay, those are the stencils. I tried to hurry and I got kind of waylaid on the flowers because <laughs> I've been having so much fun with them. Like I've just been stamping everything. Okay, let's move on to the uh, concertina. Concertina. Okay, so he, I have my concertina ready. It is ready to go. Yeah. So there's my concertina. This is three pages of 11 by 17 copy paper that I have gessoed on both sides, taped together. You do not have to use this size. And I'm going to zoom back out. You have to use this size, 11 by 17. You can use whatever size you want. And you can choose how you want it to fold. You don't have to do it in threes. So I have, I have out here, these are um, just regular copy paper, 8 by 10. And if you have heavier, if you want to use heavier paper, you can by all means, and you don't have to gesso it. I gesso both sides because I'm using lightweight paper. That is what I prefer. And by the time I get paper, you know, collage paper on it and paint on it, it's very, very strong. And that gesso on both sides really does make it feel like leather. And I love because of that, it lays really flat. But you can use whatever you want. This is um, eight and a half by 11 copy paper. You could fold it in half and do five sections or four sections. You get to choose how, you know, how many you want. You just want to be able to, to pay attention to the folds. So you want, you know, up and then the next one with the folding in half, it's all, it's always the same. It's all, it, it's super easy. You just, Fold it in half, tape these together, and then fold them up so that they fold in an accordion like that. And I, you know, if I were doing eight and a half by 11, I would probably do five of these just because I like to have that size. So these would be taped together and these would be taped together. See that? Because you want your flaps to close here and to close here towards the inside. In and in. So like with mine, I have three taped together and I folded them in an accordion fold 
and then because I want this flap to be in and I want let me do it this way I want this flap to be in let me make sure I'm doing this right yes I did, haven't cut this off yet so and I wanted to save that for you so I've done three I've cut three um, I mean I've folded three I've taped three okay so I taped this one this to this here front and back white tape you don't have to you can use masking tape then I taped the second one here and because I want my flap to fold in, I need to cut this flap off. So I'm going to cut that off right now. And you can definitely measure. I don't. I eyeball it because this isn't about perfection to me. This is about play and having fun. And I'm not too worried about the covers of this because I'm going to do an independent cover for it. So now you can see I have this closes and this closes. And there is my concertina. See that? When I tape, <clears throat> I put one on the front and then I do the next one. And you have to kind of bend your tape to fit your, you know, which direction you're folding. And then I turn it over and I put another piece of tape on the back. I do leave, I, I did leave a little bit of space here, um, which I haven't done before, and it helps it fold a little bit better. So there's my concertina. And that is, this is what it looks like. I've got, let me scooch this over. I've got the two outer flaps and then the folds in between. And you can't, I mean, any, any way that you want to do it, you can do it. So if you want to do a three fold, like this 11 by 17, I just kind of folded it half, you know, halfway here and just kind of eyeballed it and then folded the other way. You can definitely just divide your size by three if you want to do a three fold. For my concertina, this is all about spring. I have my stencils that I'm going to use and I'm going to be using the ones that I showed you today and a few others. But I've also chosen collage paper that has some spring-ish things, possibly. Uh, these, some of these detailed ones are gonna come at the end. Like this will be a base layer paper. This will be a finishing layer finishing layer. And these two downloads are available to you for free in the subscriber library and <clears throat> the membership. The rest of these are just scraps that I pulled from my stash. And I wanted them fairly neutral. I've got a couple that are not, but that's about it because that's going to be my background. Um, and I'm going to collage the entire background first. That's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna put my papers down and then I'm gonna come back and create the entire general, somewhat neutral background that I can respond to with each section. So that is the plan and then I will do a section at a time depending on how far I get and then we'll follow up in parts two and three and then part four will be the cover. Okay, that was a lot of information. But I wanted to I wanted to show you the stencils and I wanted to show you the concertina so that because I've you know I've done this will be my third one, but there's been some confusion about how I've put it together and so I wanted to kind of just go back over it again. Now, my inspiration obviously is spring, but Mary Oliver's poem Late Spring will be up on my table here, reminding me of the things that I want to see in my concertina and I want to read you her poem. It's called Late Spring. Finally, the world is beginning to change. Its fevers mounting, its leaves unfolding, and the mockingbirds find ample reason and breath to fashion new songs. They do, you can count on it. 
As for lovers, they are discovering new ways to love. Listen, their windows are open and you can hear them laughing. I love springtime when the windows are open and I can hear all the kids running down the street and neighbors talking. I love that sound. Without spring, who knows what would happen? A lot of nothing, I suppose. The leaves are in motion now. They're budding, they're blooming, they're coming out. Not quite yet here, but I'm dreaming of that. Um, the way a young boy rows and rows in his wooden boat just to get anywhere. Late, but now lovelier and lovelier. And so, and it's, and the two of us together, a part of it. So that's my inspiration for my concertina. I've been thinking about water and flowers and birds and things flying and singing and who knows where that will lead me, but that's in the back of my head and I can't wait for spring to actually happen. Today it has been a blizzard <laughs> in our area and so um, I can't, spring can't come soon enough. All right, my loves, I'm not going to keep you any longer here. All right, you can check out the stencils and then be aware that in the next two days, you'll have more videos coming to you for the finishing of our concert, spring concertina. All right, my loves, I hope your Sunday is restful and peaceful, and I hope that you always, always know that you are loved. Okay, loves, we are off to the races here, and I've got my fluid map medium out, and I've got just a whole stack of scraps that I'm putting down with my fluid map medium. I'm using my credit card, pushing them out, and making them as smooth as possible. I don't have a plan. I'm just putting them down randomly, and I'll cover the entire concertina that way, all in fairly neutral colors so that they are just an accent to the background. Now I've got some teal Prussian blue and olive green out here with a little bit of gesso. And I'm gonna activate the background with some scratchy marks. And I'm adding a little bit of gesso to my Prussian blue. And this is a real messy layer. This is just the start of where we're going. And so I've got some of that blue and that teal with a little bit of gesso and I'm just rubbing it out with my rag, same with my olive green. I'm going to do this background for the entire concertina all the way down. I'm going to add just a few highlights to the, to the top here to kind of resemble some sky and some clouds, but I don't want to get too particular. I want to let this be the beginning and then, and then respond to what's in front of me as I complete each section. And as I put my paint down, I come back with paper and kind of press it up because that's going to soften it. That's going to still allow those papers to show through underneath and then allow me to add more layers without it feeling overwhelming. And so my, my brush strokes are real fast and messy. And then I come back and I press it out with my paper. I'm coming back in with the two new stencils, the pattern stencils with some olive green real fast to give me some quick, quick pattern in that background. Same with my um, flowy leaves stencil. Just something to get me thinking about where this is going. And I've done this all the way through. Now I'm in my last section. I'm doing the same exact steps, same exact thing and allowing the background now to kind of inform me of where we go. So I've got some um, magenta, prism violet, cad yellow, cad orange, and I'm just making quick brush strokes. Just real, and I've added water to my brush, and the, this is not looking like a flower at this point. This is the background for what is to come. That background is important because it gives us something to respond to over and over again in each section. So I've taken all those colors with those just floppy brush strokes and splatters and just and ran that all over the back of or all over the concertina. Now I've got some unbleached titanium on my roller and this is where I begin to simplify things. And I'm using my tree st um, stencil. I'll roll it out 
and then I will stamp with it. And I'm not thinking yet about what's happening or what is going to happen in the sections. All I want to do is get some background down so that I can look at it and pull things out. I can say, ooh, that looks like a flower. Oh, that looks like a tree. Oh, that could be something else. And so I will roll out and stamp with this tree stencil all the way down through my concertina for this for the top section. And again, rolling out and stamping all the way down. Now I'm going to do that same thing with my floral stencils. The um, geometric or graphic floral stencils, I forgot the name of them. And I stamp it and then I'll roll it and then I'll stamp it and I'll roll it all the way down. And now I'm back to kind of a neutral background with those pops of colors in the back that's going to give me ideas of where to go. Now I'm going to add just a little bit of white and a little bit of cerulean blue and this is golden high flow and or it's cyan blue acrylic ink and again just kind of pushing things back to give me space to create now. I'm allowing I've got some ideas because of the pattern the different things in the background that we've created and now I'm starting to formulate my ideas of where this goes and you can see I've pressed that up with my paper so that it's light and all of the things underneath show through and I'm going to do this all the way down actually just for this section I've got some phthalo green and I've got some green gold and I'm going to water that down and kind of give me some watery goodness down at the bottom. With my greens, I'm not being real specific. I don't want to be too precious about this. I want to play and have fun. Add a little bit more olive green and a little bit more water. I will press that out with some paper and pick up the excess and allow it to dry. And now I'm just now I'm just focusing on my section, not the whole thing. And I've got some collage papers out here that are tiny little bits of flowers that I found in some of my stash. And I put those down with a little bit of matte gel. Now I've got some um, raw umber and I am rolling this out onto tissue paper and then stamping with it onto tissue paper and then picking it up with some tissue paper. And that's going to give me something to use now for my background. And I'm picking out just specific parts of my stenciled areas to use to um, kind of really help me focus on where this section is going. Put that tissue paper down with Liquitex Fluid Matte Medium. And now I'm going to fill in the space. I'm going to allow the background to kind of inform me. I'm going to allow the tissue paper to inform me because the background has some of those lines of those vines that we did uh, in the first layer and I'm going to follow some of those lines with my paint, with my pencil, because I'm going to use both a paintbrush and some soft pastel pencils to just kind of get some ideas and then I'll follow some of the lines in the background that are already there. So the, all those layers are important because they tell me where to go. I can see things in the background that I wouldn't necessarily see without all those layers. Plus it makes it really interesting, those layers in the background. And I'm just using my soft pastel pencils to kind of help draw out some of those lines kind of smooshing those around and then I'll come back in with my brush and really kind of make them much stronger and this is a really small angle brush 
that's helping me fill in some of those lines and make them bolder and feel stronger like the rest of the stenciled tree area. And now I'm going to come back in, I'm going to dot in my olive green, my green gold, and a little bit of gesso. And I'm just dotting them wherever I can. I'm not thinking about it. And that is all that we are going to be doing for this section in this part one. We will finish up the rest of this section in part two. And then we'll go to part three and then the cover. So I will see you in the next video.